Hi, I'm Ellie and this is my Toyota Hiace Arcadia which I have just finished self-converting into a camper van and if you've been following along on my journey then you would know I've had a bit of trouble with my electrics but I finally got it all sorted so I wanted to take you through what went wrong and how I fixed it as well as the processes that I did myself and the ones I had an electrician do and the completed system. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. So the basis for my electrical system is a Renogy 200 watt premium solar kit which came with two 100 watt solar panels, the cabling, an MPPT 20 amp charge controller and I also got a DC to DC charger from Renogy as well. Plus it came with a Bluetooth add-on that allows me to use the Renogy app on my phone to view information about the solar. The first thing I did was attach the two solar panels to the roof of the van. This was a pretty simple DIY which started with using the Z brackets and attaching them to the underside of the panels. I then selected the location which was to go widthways in front of my Max Air fan and this was just where the panels fit the best. I then marked the location of the holes and pre-drilled using a metal drill bit. The next thing I did was take some mod wood, which is recycled plastic made to look like wood, and use some liquid nails to glue this underneath those pre-drilled holes. This is because the roof itself is really thin and it's not a lot to anchor the solar panels down into, so by creating another block on the underside of the roof had something a little bit more secure that the screws can actually attach down into. So once the liquid nails were dry, I then got back up on the roof again and drilled over the top of where I had pre-drilled those metal holes. So now I was pre-drilling down into the mod wood as well. I then used some butyl tape as a preliminary way of sticking the brackets down onto the roof. And this will also act as a sealant too. And then I screwed down into those pre-drilled holes. I then wrapped a bit of silicon around the edge of the brackets and around the top of the screws. As for the cabling, I wanted to have as much of this inside the van as possible, so I drilled a hole large enough that the connectors could fit through and put the cabling down through this hole. There's lots of different ways you can go about positioning the hole for your cabling and sealing it, but I decided to just keep things really basic by having the hole right next to the solar panels, and then I used a plastic lid which I cut a smaller opening so it was only big enough for the actual part of the cable that was sitting there, and then stuck that down and sealed it all with silicon, and I haven't had any leaks. The solar kit was designed to be connected in series, which is what I did originally, but I ended up having issues with the voltage coming off the panels, so I ended up buying some adapters and changing it to parallel. For connecting the rest of the cabling, I had an electrician in to do this, and this involves connecting the solar panel cables into my charge controller, and then cables coming out of the charge controller and into my battery. My battery is from a website called 12 Volt Life PO4 and it is a 120 amp hour lithium battery. If you've been doing a bit of research then you've probably already come across the differences between AGM and lithium batteries. Basically lithium is more expensive up front but you can drain it to about 10% of its capacity as opposed to AGM which you can only drain to 50% of its capacity. So I spoke about this in my van tour video, but I've got my charge controller and my 12 volt fan on the side of my wardrobe, as well as the remote for my max fan and my puck lighting. Then in my electronics nook down here, I've got the fuse box that connects to my water pump, my fan and my reversing camera. Then the 12 volt outlets that have my fridge and the 12 volt fan coming off them. This is a 1000 watt inverter and that allows me to use my sandwich press, charge my very power hungry laptop, and I also have a bunch of USB outlets on here which don't really need the inverter but it's just convenient. So here's my charge controller. On the home screen I can see that the battery is at 14.3 volts which means it's full. So it's only on boost charging at the moment which is basically just topping up what the fridge is drawing. So I'm getting 17 volts off the panels, 6 amps, battery is at 100%, voltage is 14.3, got nothing coming out of the load which is here since everything's coming straight off the battery. As for the lights, I have two built-in lights that are powered off the van battery and then I also have some puck lights which I put some magnets on the back so I can stick them around the van and I just push those to turn them on. So by opening my right hand side sliding door we're able to access a lot of the electrics 
So I've got my fridge plugged in there and then this cable here runs from the van battery via my DC to DC charger to the secondary battery and that's mounted on the back of the wardrobe and it's also got my 240 volt inlet attached. Then it's got the Bluetooth piece that connects to the charge controller on the side of the wardrobe. And then going down, we can see the inverter and the back of the 12 volt socket and my little fuse box there, which all runs down through this hole at the bottom into the battery. So I've just slid back the seat here so I can see down to the battery. So there it is strapped to the floor. And then obviously you can see the positive on the left and the negative on the right. And all those cablings go to the DC to DC, my inverter uh, from the charge controller as well, and the 12 volt, and all those cables go there. So these are the ones coming from the charge controller. There's the fuse from the solar. So even though I had an electrician do the initial installation, I still had a variety of issues, some of which I was able to troubleshoot with some assistance, such as changing the solar panels to parallel, but others were more confusing and persistent, such as it seemed that the fridge could not stay on overnight or it could max get one night, but it wouldn't last the second. So one of the troubleshoots that I did to test the battery was to leave everything in the van off leave the battery just charging on its own for a few days, then removing it from the system altogether, testing the voltage, then letting it sit separate from the system overnight and then testing the voltage in the morning again. And that was able to show me that it was holding charge as it maintained that voltage overnight. So after a few weeks of testing and waiting and trying something else and contacting Renergy customer support, I decided to just hand the whole thing over to an auto electrician. So when the auto electrician looked at the system, they believed that the charge controller was faulty. Now the original charge controller I had was faulty and Renergy took about two weeks to replace that. And now this was the new one in, but they thought that there was an issue with this one as well. And they advised that I just get a charge controller from a different brand which is what I did, but when I actually took it to them with the new charge controller and they had another look at this system, they decided that the charge controller from Renergy, the second one, wasn't actually faulty. Then they went on to the battery, ran a few tests on that. So the auto electrician diagnosed the reason behind the fridge not lasting for more than one night was that the fridge setting was too cold. Now this is still a little bit of a mystery to me because I could definitely hear the fridge cycling on and off when it was working and it's only rated at 5 amps per hour so if it's cycling on and off it should definitely last on my 120 amp hour battery but for whatever reason it wasn't and since it was turned down about a week and a half ago now the fridge has not turned off. The auto electrician also installed my Renergy DC to DC charger, which means my van battery is now connected to my secondary battery. So I have this as an alternate charging source if I'm not getting enough power through the solar. The auto electrician also installed an inlet that will allow me to connect to 240 volt power with a charger, such as at campgrounds. For the most part, these systems should be self-sustaining and off-grid, but this is just an extra thing I can have if I do want to top up. So to access the van battery, I have to lift up the seat just next to the engine here. And you can see this black tubing here, which goes out a grommet at the back, goes all the way around to the DC to DC charger. And so my electrical system is finally working properly. This has been the longest and most confusing part of this whole self-conversion process, which is ironic because it's the only part that I have enlisted professional help for. My biggest takeaway is if I were to do this again, I would just go with an RV electrical installations company and have them supply and install everything. That way it's just one company responsible so that if something goes wrong, I know exactly who to go to. Part of what made it so confusing is not knowing what was wrong with the system so I didn't know exactly who to contact or what questions to ask. It would definitely cost a lot more to have the same company supply and do everything but I think it would save me a lot in time. So with the van electrics all sorted I'm now ready to set off on my road trip around New South Wales. If you have any more questions about my electrical system then leave me a comment below. I will be posting new videos every Saturday of my journey and other van life content so if you want to come along for the ride then be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.